All right, welcome everyone. So today we're gonna continue on the ciphering we were doing last week. We did um, Caesar cipher. It was a pretty easy kind of cipher, not very useful. Today what we're going to do, we're going to try to do a mono um, mono alphabetic substitution cipher. So it means that you, uh, you're gonna map the, the current letters in the alphabet to another letter in your ciphered alphabet. So like this thing is saying, create a program that can take a piece of text and encrypt it with an alphabetic substitution cipher. We can iron your space, number and symbol, and um, we're going to do just this. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, think about it. It's pretty simple. The idea is this thing. You have, this is your alphabet, right? We're writing in this alphabet, not this one. And uh, what we want to do is to take this thing and map it to here. So if you write A, you're going to change it to a K. If you write O, you're going to change it to a G. If you write uh, Y, you're going to change it to an X. That's the idea. You just map directly from one uh, alpha, from your, the original alphabet to your ciphered alphabet. Um, that's pretty much that. We're going to do it in C. Uh, last week we did it in Python. We're gonna do it in C because why not? Okay, so uh, think about it uh, Think about this problem as a mapping problem more than anything else All right, here we are this is uh, I'm gonna show you what my solution for this thing. It's pretty simple We have an encrypt function and then we have a decrypt which is doing uh, exactly the opposite so if you find if you are able to do the decrypt, uh, the encrypt, you can easily do the decrypt. So let's look at the main. This is what the C code look like. Uh, it's not too pretty, but this is what it look like. So you have a main. This is my message. This is my test message, and this is my um, coded alphabet. As you see, there's no uh, space or whatever. Um, doesn't matter. We can add space if you want. We could just add another letter in the alphabet for space or we can even add like a, a variable named space which says what the space is so I first encrypt my message give the message and the code this is my code so this represents the A this represents the B this is a C D E blah 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 uh, you can scramble this as much as you want it doesn't matter then we decrypt the message afterward by giving the encrypted message and the code and then we print out the decrypted message that's all we're doing in the main let's not look at the decrypt for now let's look at not find it exact so let's look at encrypt what is it doing we have a message which is a string and we have the our alphabet I get the length of the message no I'm just gonna iterate character by character this is what I'm doing here just iterate character by character and uh, change the letter if I need to so when do I change the letter when it's between the a and a Z right if it's above that or below uh, I'm not changing it what I mean by above or below I mean this this is what I mean by above or below if you're above you're those things if you're below you're gonna be those things over here, right? Um, that's just how the ASCII uh, character are coded in the computer. So I get the length of the message, know how much I'm gonna iterate through this thing. This is my for loop, I iterate character by character. I allocate some space because uh, that's how C work. You have to allocate space yourself. Okay, so then what do I do? I lowercase everything. I have to lowercase because um, I want to have only 26 character and I, I don't want to uh, start uh, keeping track of bigger character and lower character I don't want that because if you see here those are the lowercase the uppercase are over there so the difference between a, C, a, a and a, and a, a uppercase A and a lowercase A is like about 32 uh, ASCII values so there's a difference here it's notable uh, we shouldn't take account of this. So I put this to lowercase and I do minus A to get the encryption index. 
right? Just to see, um, because here I'm preferring to use number, just to see if my uh, character is between zero to 26, right? Remember this is index zero, this represent A. So if it's between zero and 26, it means I can directly index in the code and find the character I need. So this is, uh, if my encryption index, so my character minus A is between those, well, good. I was just gonna get the code and put it there at the right place, my encrypted message. So I get the right thing. Let's say it was A. It was. It's gonna be zero minus. Uh, it was gonna be A minus A, which is in fact A ninety seven minus ninety seven. This is zero. I go over here. I have a big zero over here. I'm gonna get the B. I'm gonna put it there, at the right place. Otherwise, I just I just take the message as it was before. So. Pretty much it. If there was a space, put the space back. If it was 32, if it was a number, let's say, put it back here. And I return that. That's it. That's pretty easy. You just iterate over the characters and that's it. If we look at decrypt, same exact idea. Right? It's the same idea. Over here, same thing. Over here, same thing. The only difference is I'm going to use find index to find where this character is over here. Right? So find index, just iterate until you find the character. So let's say in the encrypted message, I the A. What does the A mean? It means B, because it at, it's at the, the first position over here, the zero, the first position, which is B. What do I do afterward? I do the base letter A plus the code index, which is uh, one in this case. I'm gonna get a B because this is 97 plus my code index over here. Uh, over here, yes, that's it, my code index, which is one, A plus one. So 97 plus one is 98. Honestly, this is just mapping characters to an array and it's just like, um, uh, it's just iterating over character and knowing how to play with the ASCII values. That's it, this is the old, the only thing that is complicated, well, the only thing I have to do it over here. Otherwise, I just, like, we didn't encrypt it if it's not, it doesn't fall between those two values, between 0 and 26. So we don't care, we just put the, the, the letter or whatever, the number directly in the decrypted message, and we got that. So let's try this. Super exciting, we're going to GCC that thing. Good, and we're gonna test it. So my origin message is test message, and then the encrypted message is this, test message. So E is mapping to a S, is that true? So A, B, C, D, E, yes it is, it's mapping to S. And you see that T is staying the same. Let's switch, let's switch T with Z. Just to see if that do the trick. Let's see it again. Um, fuck, no? Okay. Forgot to save this. That's it. So it's doing the trick. Um, however, this is breakable. Um, it's not breakable if you're sending small messages. If you're just sending this, um, it's going to be a bit difficult to know what uh, what the user said right because you just you, you, you can't uh, print out all the possible uh, solution because here uh, you have 26 letter that can be here here you have 25 you have 24 so you have 26 times 24 25 times 24 times 23 this is getting too big to just brute force your way through um, usually what you do is if you have a, a message big enough you're gonna um, check what is the the distribution of the letters if you know the distribution of letters let's say Z is coming up a lot um, and you know it's English most likely it's gonna be an E so you know that Z mapped to E right so if you know that then you can fill out um, if you know the distribution of the letter, you can fill out and use like a, 
a distribution table to just do a first try on the letters. And then after that, it's easy. It's more easy to see uh, what the, the possible uh, combination of the, the words are. But the message needs to be big enough. All right, cool. So that's it for today. Um, in the next video, we're going to try to actually do that. We're going to try to big, break this um, deciphering and we're trying to decipher some text. So um, let me know if you have any question. Uh, if you did something, uh, show me. And um, if you have requests or whatever, let me know. See you in the next video.